So I am curious, what as actors, what is it like to actually adapt your characters from animation? You know, like, because it has to be a little weird or different than anything you've done before. Yeah, I mean, I think, you know, there's a great, uh, a great sense of care that um, goes into just the initial approach, because you do have so many people who uh, hold these characters so close to their hearts. So you really want to do them justice, you really want to respect um, what was already there. Um, but I think, you know, for our characters are not in the anime a whole lot. So there's also a lot of room for us as actors to, I think, build and play and find what's right. Um, the dynamic of this relationship was really uh, fun to sort of crack, yeah. you know, throughout the whole season. So um, yeah, it was just, uh, it was just, you know, the, the, the extra, the extra care that you really want the people to feel like you respected what was there and built on that instead of changing it completely. I second everything uh, Elena says. I think, uh, you know, it's trying to find the core of the character that should remain, you know, that without which they're not the character from the anime. I think that's really important. But then to live up to what has been written uh, by the brilliant team of writers for our um, live action version, which is the sort of plus, you know, the the extra, the expanded backstories and the the um, the new layers of these characters and their histories. One of the cool things about Cowboy Bebop, or one of the many cool things, is it's unlike anything else that's on television. Um, it's when you talk into itself, isn't mm -hmm. it? That's what they said in the Absolutely. original. Yeah, yeah, hundred percent. When you've been talking to your friends and family about the series, what are some of the things you keep telling them? Like, I can't wait for you to see this. We're not allowed to talk to our friends and family <laughs> about the series. <laughs> not that they just know we've been in New Zealand doing some mysterious project. Yeah. Um, for me, it was um, the fights. I just so enjoyed getting to do getting to do the fighting. Actually, you won't have seen the my, the big fight yet because you've got another couple of episodes to go. But um, the physical side, um, all of in fact, the stunt team and the stunt yeah. choreography is so imaginative um, that yeah, that's uh, something I'm looking forward to people getting a kick out of. Yeah, for me, it was. Uh the one thing I told my mom was, oh, I, I get to sing. I can't wait for you to see me sing on a stage. So that was, that was one thing that I was hopefully allowed to say yeah. <laughs> to my own mother. Uh, one of the other things about this is um, how, like the world is so unique for people that have never seen it. How, like, what would you like to sort of tell them about it? Mm, I guess it's slick and pulpy and mm -hmm. um, like a Western and a noir, noir um, space and like Western. a 70s um, <laughs> martial arts film. Uh, and uh, for us, like a real gothic drama. kind of drama. Yeah, yeah. yeah. it uh, touches a lot of bases. Pretty much something for everyone. Yeah, it has, oh. a do it has a dog in it. I mean, what more Who do you want? Who doesn't like dogs? Come on. Great. Well, one of the cool things, and you sort of touched on it already, is that your characters are, I think, are the biggest changes from the animated show in terms of, you know, the expanded roles. So can you sort of talk about like how, um, I guess, how that ended up um, allowing you to have that freedom that even though it was in the animated series, you didn't really feel beholden to it? Or I guess, could you talk a little bit about that? Well, it's not that we didn't feel beholden to it. I just think that there, there was so much room to build because these characters are, um, you know, we just see glimpses of them in the anime. So really taking what's at the core there and being able to create dynamic layered characters and a, and a layered storyline um, while respecting, you know, the idea that already existed um, was, I think, um, was what was really exciting about this, was really getting to knowing that people were going to see a new side of these characters that they didn't see in the anime. Um, and not to spoil things for you, but episode nine is quite a, a backstory heavy episode for um, Vicious, Julia and Spike and yes. that love triangle. Um, so to get to have that fleshed out um, and get a sense of why these characters are the way that they are, particularly, you know, why mm -hmm. Vicious um, has such beef with Spike and has such a kind of hold over Julia, um, that was really an interesting way to kind of root the heightened kind of um, violent nature of, of, of the character in some um, 
a kind of pain and uh, 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 try, you know self protection, I guess. Yeah, I, I could sort of feel like that episode had to have be had to be coming with yeah. the way it's been building up, you know, all season. Um, when I spoke, uh, I heard that basically all the department heads were told to plant Easter eggs. And it was like a big part of the series. So what would you want to tell people about maybe where they should look in in scenes that involve you guys? Well, so Vicious in the anime has a cormorant um, with him quite famously um, that he feeds and um, is this kind of specter of death. Mm -hmm. And I, I think fans will be looking for some evidence of the cormorant. Um, and I would say around my costume, you might see little nods toward that um, that you could look out for. Uh, what I really loved that costumes did was um, there's the story in the anime that I believe Spike tells about the tiger striped cat and the white cat. Um, and there is a coat. I wear a tiger striped coat um, on I believe it's on my date, my first date with Vicious. Yeah. Um, so I thought that was a really that was a really cool little Easter egg. That's actually, I didn't even real, I didn't, I didn't put it anyway. Um, what is for, I love learning about the behind the scenes of the show. Obviously everyone has heard about, you know, you guys had to shut down for a little while because of John's hurt his knee. Uh, what else do you think might surprise people to learn about the actual making of the series? Well, <laughs> one thing is to, to for Vicious being obviously an incredibly violent character who's constantly covered in blood, one thing is that my wig wasn't allowed to get any blood on it at all because it would turn pink if it did. Um, so if ever I had blood, they had to like weave these specific parts uh, into my wig. Uh, and there was an amusing time during this big fight where um, a practical blood effect uh, didn't slight, you know, didn't quite end up where it was supposed to and it all just went onto my hair. So I immediately oh. had to be rushed off. Um, and just, you know, doused with some sort of, I don't know, hair treatment. Um, so, yeah, that, that, that might not be what people would expect, I guess. I think I, I, think I, I must have had some similar stuff with hair, too, because the wigs, you know, the, yeah. I remember the climbing out of a car and somebody being like, make sure there's no blood in there because we got to do this again. And lo and behold, just a pool of blood. <laughs> On that note, I got to stop. Again, congrats. Uh, I look forward to seeing the rest of the series. I hope it's a huge hit. Thank you so Thank much. You so Thank much. you Thanks. very Take much. Care.